Welcome back to our Med Smarter Question of the Week, where we're taking a smarter approach to preparing future physicians. Before we get started, if you'll take just a quick minute and click that like button, and also subscribe and turn the bell on so that you'll be notified when we post new videos. Let's get into a renal question today. As always, we start with the last sentence of the vignette before we read the rest so that we know what this is asking us. Which of the following is the most appropriate treatment? A 43-year-old man is hospitalized with hypovolemic shock after massive blood loss in a motor vehicle accident. On the patient's second day in the hospital, his blood urea nitrogen, or BUN, and creatinine levels begin to rise, and he develops pitting edema up to his knees. A subsequent urinalysis shows numerous granular casts. So which of the following is the most appropriate treatment? So the most important thing to note in this question is that a patient had hypovolemic shock because of massive blood loss. So when you have massive blood loss, we have less blood and nutrients and oxygen that's able to get to some of the tissues. So when we see blood urea, nitrogen, and creatinine levels begin to rise, and then we see these numerous granular casts show up on their urinalysis, that tells me this patient's undergoing what's known as acute tubular necrosis. So what we're needing to know now is what is the best treatment or the most appropriate treatment for a patient that is currently undergoing acute tubular necrosis. So let's look at those answer choices. Broad spectrum antibiotics, A. B, corticosteroids. C, fluids and dialysis. D, angioplasty. Or E, use of ultrasound to remove blockage. Take a minute, read through the question and answer choices again, come up with your answer, and put it in the comment box below. Well, first and foremost, because we already have determined that this is acute tubular necrosis, that can help us eliminate some of these answer choices. So I'm gonna go ahead and eliminate answer choice A because acute tubular necrosis isn't due to an infection. This is actually due to loss of blood and hypovolemia, so there's no infection we need to clear up. I would also note that if we do give them uh, antibiotics, uh, a lot of times those antibiotics require renal clearance, so using medications like this could cause more problems for those that are metabolized by the kidney. I'm going to leave B in for the time being. I'm going to leave C in for the time being. D, angioplasty. We don't need to go in and revascularize any of the arteries in the kidneys because that's not what our problem is. So D is going to be a, a choice eliminated. And then E, use of ultrasound to remove blockage. We've already determined acute tubular necrosis. That doesn't have a blockage, so we're going to eliminate that choice as well. So that leaves us down to choice B and choice C. And we're asking for what the most appropriate treatment is. Well, I know corticosteroids can be used for acute renal failure, but that's really more going to be associated with immune-mediated disease rather than hypovolemic problems. We wouldn't use corticosteroids in this instance because that's a different type of renal failure. So in that case, my choice is going to be answer choice C, fluids and dialysis. And C is the correct answer. So like we said, this patient is dealing with acute tubular necrosis, or ATN. This is because of that ischemia that happened during that motor vehicle accident and the massive blood loss. The problem here that we're having is acute tubular necrosis of our, specifically of our epithelial cells in the proximal convoluted tubule. A key buzzword for us to think acute tubular necrosis is going to be those numerous granular casts. Those numerous granular casts are a good sign that we are dealing with acute tubular necrosis. So what we're going to do with this patient is to correct that fluid loss and try and bring back the fluid balance and the electrolyte balance into the body. So where fluid placement should be started and it should use crystalloid like normal saline or lactated ringers as well as some of our blood products because we had lost so much blood, we do need to replace some of those blood products as well. And then, if we don't see much recovery of our renal function immediately, then we will definitely move on into dialysis. So fluids and dialysis is typically going to be indicated in these patients uh, until the kidneys could recover, if they do recover. 
this could be something that could take a few weeks, hopefully, and not something permanent, but there is a chance that this could cause some permanent damage. If you found this material helpful for your studying, please like and consider subscribing to the channel. Also, share this video so that more people can benefit from it like you have.